somewhere in space. This may all be happening right now. Welcome to Star Wars Cannon Fodder, the Star Wars podcast about all things non-canonical, like books, toys, games, and other legends of the Star Wars universe. I'm your host, Brian West. With me is Aaron Sachs. Hey, everybody. And Miguel Silva. What up? Chut, chut, guys. Chut, chut. Chut, chut, Brian. I am going to make this a thing. (laughs) Nothing can stop me. It is. It is already. (laughs) Not even the Celestials. Yuck. (laughs) <laughs> All right, so let's get this disclaimer out of the way, but uh, there will be constant spoilers for <laughs> all the non-canonical expanded universe legend stuff, so if you care about that kind of thing, then, uh, you know, you've been warned. Thanks. Also, there are a lot of ways to be a Star Wars fan, and I hope no matter what kind of fan you are, you have a sense of humor. Every book is somebody's favorite book, so if we make fun of your baby or your precious crystal star Star. book then just deal with it you know we love star wars that's why we're here so if we make fun of it it's just you know deal with it yeah just just loving some of these shows i was thinking might be more like book club in-depth discussions of heir to the empire and how it fits into the canon and its historical significance But sometimes we just want to have fun and look at Wikipedia and talk trash. So this show, we're going to be talking about Kessel. Kessel or the Spice spice Mines of Kessel? The Spice Mines of Kessel. Kessel in general. I mean, the Spice Mines are really the meat of Kessel. (laughs) They're the main draw (laughs) of Kessel. (laughs) <laughs> that's but uh do you... so people people don't go to kessel to see the rest of kessel they go to see the spice mines oh yeah no no one's no one's going there for anything else the kessel the mine is the big draw okay is there any other description of kessel besides the spice mines uh you mean on wikipedia <laughs> sure <laughs> <laughs> it's hard enough finding anything yeah. on the spice mines or uh, anything on Kessel in, in general. You, uh, well, I don't know. I, I've got a pretty good amount of information here. <laughs> I felt like I actually had to cut a lot out because I was like, we, we can't go into all of this. <laughs> nice. It's also, it's one of those things that has enough mentions in Star Wars that it's been explored in a lot of different media and a lot of different stories, or at least mentioned in a lot of different stories. But right. one of the reasons I wanted to talk about it first was I was trying to think about when we were doing notes for like the concept of this podcast. I was thinking about I'm like what's like my earliest memory, like expanded universe memory. So after after Effent Mon, you came to no, Kessel. This is... <laughs> <laughs> of course. No, no this is all... pre this is before I even knew what what Effent Mon was or <laughs> why that exists. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. One of my best friends who kind of like got me into Star Wars when I was a kid, like he had an older brother and we were watching Star Wars and they mentioned Kessel and his older brother was like, yeah, there's like these mines there and uh, there's energy spiders that like bite you and suck your life force out. And I was just like, what? What? <laughs> what movie is that in? <laughs> so wait, Wait a second. <laughs> Cuz that wasn't that introduced in the Jedi Academy trilogy? Is that um, that old? I think so. Cuz I, I know, know it's mentioned. It, it had to be, I mean, this could not have been later than like 1994 or so when he told me about it. So I wonder if it was a source book thing. Cuz I mean, maybe. that is one of the cool things about the Spice Mines is it's mentioned in like the first 5 minutes of the movie. Yeah. Of episode four. It has two mentions very early on. So, it, I mean, much bigger much di- bigger deals have been made of much smaller things <laughs> <laughs> as far as expanded universe goes. Yes. I mean, look at, uh, what's that one Jedi's name who's like in the background of a shot in episode one? And he's like, oh boy. God, like the guy with the big head? 
No, no, no. He's like a human guy. He just has like some paint on his face. But he's like becomes like one of the main characters in the you're, Clone Wars. You're talking about Quinlan Voss. Quinlan Voss is who I'm yeah. talking about, who has <laughs> almost no presence in the movies and has like like if you go to his Wikipedia page, it's massive. <laughs> they they refer to him in uh we should probably do a whole episode on Quinlan Voss, but they oh, do refer will. to him in, in episode three. <laughs> oh yeah, he says like, Oh Master Quinlan Voss, blah 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 blah. Yeah, and then he and then he wrote Hard Day's <laughs> Night. <laughs> my, my, thank you, thank you. My Obi Wan Kenobi sounds a little bit like uh, Paul McCartney. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Master Quint. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. Uh, do you guys remember like wh- what were you thoughts when you were watching Star Wars and they were like, "We're going to be sent to the spice mines of Kessel and smashed into who knows what." Uh, I barely, I don't think I gave it much mention when, or much thought when I was a kid, like the, the Kessel run got more, you know, mm. brain power because Han Solo said it. Yeah. See, that's but, kind of the opposite for me. Really? Like I was, I was intrigued to, uh, learn what the Kessel run might be, but I couldn't get past the whole parsecs thing, like <laughs> to be, to be a super nerd. Um, but then hearing about the spice mines of Kessel, so for me with Star Wars, the the big one of the coolest things was this world that Lucas created. But we had only re- explored these smaller uh, parts of it in the movies, right? It, but there was plenty of other like references to other other things. So you hear mm-hmm. something like the spice mines of Kessel, you're like. What's Kessel? What is what does spice represent in this world? Right? <laughs> you know, like as a ki- as a kid, especially, you have like no idea what spice might represent. You're like, are they yeah. are they talking about cinnamon? Do they mine cinnamon <laughs> from this place? Like, right? That would be um, my first thought. <laughs> yeah, cinnamon. As like you know, a six year old kid or whatever, I'm not going to automatically jump to narcotics. <laughs> so uh, let me let's jump into Kessel. So. Kessel originally was known as Zoe's Eye. And this was during the Empire of Zim. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what any of that means, but that is nope, some high quality I. writing. Let me tell you, it's a planet located in the Outer Rim territories, and during mm. the reign of the Empire, it was a prison world and home of the largest glitter stim spicing might. <laughs> I can't Spice, even. Yes, largest. Glitter stim spice mining o- operation. Yeah, now we're getting in. That's what I remember. That's my first <laughs> memories. The planet itself is sort of a. Um, it's kind of like oblong shaped. Which, look, I'm not an astronomer, but if a planet is a sort of <laughs> asteroid <laughs> oblong <laughs> shape, uh, isn't that a planetoid? Like, if it's small and it's like not a circle. <laughs> I feel like that's like a planetoid. <laughs> it, it's yeah. not a planet. Yeah, and it's it definitely says, not a planet. It also says that the atmosphere is very thin, with most of the air being provided by factories on the surface. <laughs> air uh, factories. So <laughs> is there is there terraforming in the Star Wars? So terraforming in, in the Star is, Wars universe is there? Um. Yes. Yeah, not that it, not any that I can think of like right off the top of my head, but I'm sure there is. I always got the impression that in the movies it was more like a uh this is space fantasy and not science fiction, so it was sort of like, you know, hand-waving or like, oh, all the planets just have breathable atmosphere and all these species just breathe the same thing and it it just <laughs> works, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So when I was reading this and I was like, oh, it's like terraformed, this seems kind of weird. Or maybe it's just in a bubble and they like pump air into a bubble. I, I don't know. Yeah, God, I don't think I remember any. I can't think I, offhand I think, of any planet way, that doesn't have breathable air. The way that that reads to me is that um, it's just like a product of the mines. That seems like a very uh, convenient product. Like <laughs> instead of like pumping out pollution, it just pumps out oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> right? Dude, glitter stim is the best. All right. By the way, Let, let's just <laughs> let's talk about glitter stim. First of all, this name is. I wish that it was just called either glitter or stim because those two words together don't 
it doesn't work well in your mouth. I don't know. <laughs> they don't drive, awesome. baby. <laughs> Yeah, it's like having coffee and beer or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's not working. The umami for me. isn't there. Yeah, yeah. So glitter Dude. stim is a potent variety of the drug family quote spice that was mined on Kessel. It gave the user brief, pleasurable telepathic boosts. Boom! Stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> That is, it's the most ridiculous thing ever. <laughs> that is the most ridiculous thing ever. Well, that's, oh, that's we're like going to get to straight, way more ridiculous that's straight out of, That's like straight out of Dune. I never yeah, read Dune. But that's what Dune is all about. And in Dune, it's almost more of a like hippie avatar thing. <laughs> no, Dune, <clears throat> excuse me, Dune, it's like part of, of everything and every... <clears throat> Every religious faction, every, like, political faction, the, like, in order to navigate the hyperspace lanes in, like, the Dune yeah. universe. The, you mean the like, Dune universe? Yeah, the, the Dune universe. Exactly. The, the normies, quote unquote normies, <laughs> uh, have to take spice, and then it also has precognitive, grants precognitive uh, visions, and lots of other stuff. So it's not like... Yeah, it's but it is. Illicit, it's not an illicit substance in the Dune universe. Yeah, and but it's more like a. It's almost like a religious substance, like a Terrence McKenna food of the gods type of thing. <laughs> yes, that. But it also has like. <laughs> it also has other purposes, most notably. Who thinks that we would be referencing Terrence McKenna on this podcast? <laughs> on episode two. I mean, I'm on this episode, <laughs> or I'm on this podcast, so you can only assume that at some point it might come into play. <laughs> so thank you for mentioning it before me. Second episode, we're into it, guys. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, it I don't know. I know it gets wackier, but like it's just it's just crazy that it gives telepathic powers. It's a little silly. Like it's uh, and that's off that's right off the bat. Like you're right, it does get even more just like rid- <laughs> ridiculous. But like yeah. I was going to ask, though, I, all, was one... All I'm saying is that it was like, that's just a direct callback to Dune. All right. Yeah, yeah. The idea is definitely, I mean, George Lucas was probably, was definitely influenced by Dune. And Spice originally was actually a really big part of the Star Wars story. And it, it was one of those things that, like the Kyber crystal that basically was uh, <laughs> removed, <Yeah>. you know? Because <laughs> um, that stuff was like major, major plot points. But yeah, it feels like some writer was like, oh, well, this obviously came from Dune, so I'll just import this thing from Dune and place it like a <laughs> like a handmade uh, jigsaw puzzle piece into yeah, this absolutely. <laughs> real puzzle. Into the stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I do, so I remember that that is the, one of the most vivid memories of me for Star Wars Expanded Universe because, now correct me if I'm wrong, but this all of this nonsense was first fully fleshed out in the Jedi Academy trilogy. Right, I believe I'm gonna have so. to trust you on that one. Jedi Search, I believe, and the reason it's so vivid to me is because this all starts with the Falcon like crashing, mm-hmm. like they essentially destroy the Falcon, and like that, and Han and Chewie end up on Kessel, and then <laughs> okay. you're never, you're yeah. Is that when they never, uh, <laughs> that when they find huh? Kip Duron? Yes, <laughs> yeah. I was just exactly, and I was gonna say you'll never guess, but all kinds of like connective tissue to the whole Star Wars universe is like found in this one freaking mine that they crash into. That's classic expanded universe right there. Oh, I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous. So spice, how spice is made, this is gets even more silly. So mm-hmm. it's made from the webs of the spice spiders, the energy spiders that are on Wait, what's in that, Brian? <laughs> Say that again. So you take the web <laughs> <laughs> you take the web from the spider's butt and uh, you process it. I don't even know. Maybe you just have it. So it says that it has to be it has to be mined in total darkness because yes. glitter stem, the spice, is uh, it's photoactive, which I guess means you like it. It's activated by UV light. So I guess okay. I, I don't. I don't yeah, know. I mean, do you, sci-fi do you, shit. Do you freebase it? Do you like? <laughs> Do you put some spice in a foil, in like a foil ball, and then like shine a light on yeah. it, and then try to suck up all the spice dust? Oh. Yeah, I wish I could remember. I don't remember because one of the things, like they they run into the whole like the guy that runs the place. 
mm-hmm. the spice mines of Kessel. Morith Duel, I believe is his name. Is I have his frog? card right here. Hang on, I can there you confirm go. that. He's like some sort of frog creature. Morith Duel. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he's yeah, a ribbit. There you go. Yeah. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. No? Nice. Nothing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this, wait, hold on. Get the... <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> His species is Rybit, and he looks like a frog. Mm-hmm. Yes. I fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he runs the spice mines. What about that? It's crazy, Brian. But anyway, so yeah, they run into him, and he's like nutso, crazy, and he's a psychic because he's been, yeah, I guess freebasing spice. <laughs> Must be good. So it seems complicated. So that would make him uh, what they call a uh, a glit biter. So glitter oh, stem, <laughs> glitter stem is highly addictive, and those addicted to it are called glit biters. Glit biters, glit. <laughs> Nobody rocks the biters. glit like I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the glit commander. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I actually so have sorry, that, Brian. Yeah. I have that in my notes, and I, I forgot that I wrote it down. It was a very pleasant, <laughs> pleasant surprise. I have in my notes, quote, nobody rocks the glit like we do. Yes. Good. Oh, Good. Good. So uh, well if, we can, if we can tie all this glit talk into jizz. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. The, First the, two shows, <laughs> episode one, jizz. Yeah. Bith, the Bith musician, Figure and Dan of Figure and Dan and the Modal Nodes, was notably a glit biter. Boom. That's where uh, all the best material comes from. Uh, that's awesome. You did bridge the gap between jizz and glit. Yeah, and um, to just to expand on, <laughs> on jizz a little bit more, this is a little side note about jizz. But I found out in addition to uh, the term jizz, there's also the term jizz whaler. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is a term for musicians who specialize in playing jizz song. So figuring (laughs) figuring Dan was... (laughs) I'm totally putting that on my business cards. So figuring Dan was a jizz whaling glit biter. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) Explain to me again how this was all (laughs) destroyed and lost the time. Why? (laughs) Yeah. Why didn't J.J. Uh, Abrams want to work this into the movie? <laughs> yeah, why is he? Yeah, why did he not lift this? Oh boy, it's just too good. This is why we're doing this show, people. Yeah, the people need to know. <laughs> How is it that they couldn't have come up with something better? <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> God, I'm on board. I'm on board with the spiders. Let's 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 go with the spiders. Are you on board with energy spiders? Yeah, man, it's like Slurm. Yeah, you know, no, I actually true. I actually did think the energy spiders were a really cool thing. Probably because I was so afraid of spiders as a child. I thought, oh, what a cool thing to see Han Solo fighting giant spiders. Or maybe I liked it because it was in the Ewok movie. Didn't they have to fight a big spider in the Ewok movie? It's been so long since I've seen him. God, yeah, I don't even remember. I, we'll I just remember out. the big scary giant guy. <laughs> In a few weeks when we watch it. I looked yeah. at him I looked at him the other day sitting on my son's DVD shelf and had Soon. incredible remorse that I'm gonna have to put myself through watching those. I man, I'm no. looking forward to it. Me too. Um so the energy spiders or spice spiders are arachnids that inhabit the spice mines of Kessel. I guess if they they made the mines, but then they also made the thing that makes the mines valuable, that's weird. <laughs> yes. And just to keep it more interesting, there's good ones and bad ones from what I remember. <laughs> what? <Nice. laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's like the regular ones that make the nonsense spice and they're they're bad. <laughs> and then, Is that a different kind of spice? No, that's the non- <laughs> Oh, just the just nonsense in one, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then there's red ones. Those ones are blue. And then <laughs> there's red <laughs> ones that are herbivores that feed on, like, fungus, and those ones are fine. And they could... <laughs> this is so dumb when I explain it. These are the red ones... <laughs> only when you explain it. Only when I explain it. Red the red blue. spiders, and this is lifted directly from Wikipedia, those red spiders had a poisonous effect on baseline energy spiders, 
the blue ones. Boy. So it was like rock, paper, scissors. I shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes. So I, I see here in my notes that the spiders actually shoot the webbing from their mouth. If that makes it any better, you're you're uh, you're glit so biting not, something from their mouth, not from their butt. Not from their butt. Okay. Uh, but they also impale you with their mouth, and that's how they suck the energy out. So it's a very multi-purpose mouth. What uh, what kind of energy are we talking? I don't know. That was a question <laughs> I had when I was a kid. I always assumed it meant sort of like your life force. <laughs> but I, I don't really understand, and I couldn't really find any clarification. Just like energy, it's just your energy, man. Yeah, I assume it kills you, right? I guess Presumably. it's whatever energy powers your body, <laughs> because when they take it, you die. The administrators of the Spice Mines of Kessel would actually send prisoners who were disruptive to work in the extra deep tunnels where they would get. Fed to the uh, to the yeah, energy spiders, right? Which is you know nice. It kind of keeps your pr- prisoners from wanting to run away. It's like, oh yeah, run uh-huh. away. Just deal with the energy spiders. Yeah, yeah. I remember all that. Seems um, horrifying. So moving on to the imperial <laughs> time period, Admiral Akbar notably almost became an inmate on the prison of Kessel after he was captured by Boba Fett. Of course. And turned over to the Imperials. He was, of course, rescued by Han Solo at the last minute. So that would have been Man, a, Akbar gets around. You know, Akbar Akbar is pretty he's he's a pretty guy. He would be eaten alive in prison. Yeah, he would. Dude, Akbar's <laughs> been everywhere. Yeah. People love Akbar. Yeah. Uh, so this he's is so a basically pretty guy. Yeah. And well he is, but Yeah, so this is just a... Uh, Essentially, um, it acts as some sort of like Alcatraz prison for the Star Wars universe, right? Yeah, basically. It's just like everybody ends up at Kessel at some yeah. point in like the entire expanded universe. It's a it are, it's a rite of passage. Yeah. Like, oh man, <laughs> this has got to be huge. Yeah, Wedge Antilles. There you fan go. favorite Wedge Antilles, hero of the mm-hmm. rebellion, also became a prisoner. <laughs> And slave at one of the Empire's spice mines, but ultimately was rescued by Luke Skywalker. No, <laughs> get out. You're noticing a trend here. Yeah. I believe it. <laughs> so basically everybody went there, and this was this is all um original trilogy era when this happened. This isn't even post uh Battle of Endor, so wait, so Akbar was captured before? Before Return of the Jedi. Before Return of the Jedi by Boba Fett. And was rescued, and rescued by, by Han. Han Solo. Before Return Before. of the Jedi. I don't know when they had time <laughs> to do any of this. <laughs> wow. People treat things, the like... Things three, happen fast. People treat the like two or three year gaps between movies like like 20 year gaps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But who had it out it's for the Akbar beauty of that the expanded bad? Universe. Uh, the Empire. Yeah. Did they have it out for Akbar? Yeah, really? he's like a he's an general. admiral. Yeah, no, admiral. he's an a- he's right. <laughs> so they de- so what? He's like so some decide- kind of general. They're- well, they decide they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna send Boba Fett after him, but don't kill him, just dump him on Kessel. Yeah, they maybe they wanted to turn him into a glit biter. <laughs> it-, it was a trap. It's more wow. humiliating to throw uh, him in the spice mines. Good job, Brian. Speaking of uh, Admiral Akbar, if any of you have not done the Admiral Akbar dating simulator, go <laughs> run, <laughs> run to YouTube oh, yeah. and yeah, look up stuff. look up Asterios Kokonos's um, Admiral Akbar dating simulator, which is like an interactive YouTube video. That's uh, amazing. You can get to have a night out with Admiral Akbar. Yeah, it's really good. And go to an Applebee's with him. <laughs> Big in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Uh, so, after the Battle of Endor, the Imperials on Kessel decided to just abandon the planetoid. They're like, Empire's <laughs> over. Let's take all the glit we can and, and get the hell out of here. Shut her so, down. Exactly. They <laughs> shut down the factories and the atmosphere started floating away. But it says here that the prisoners 
were forced to keep working in the thinning air. So did they leave like just uh, like a few people or did they? Uh, I don't understand. <laughs> well, no. Yeah. They leave a whole a whole like retinue, if you will, <laughs> of like people because <laughs> but like the Falcon why, crashes there. If the well, they didn't give a shit about the slaves, like. But if, if they're, they're going to shut it down, they're not going to like spend the resources to transport everybody off the the planetoid. But it says the slaves were forced to keep working, so they had to leave at least a few people there. <laughs> everybody yeah, else but, left, but then if they were going to leave They were some forced people to there, keep working cuz otherwise they were going to die from the lack of atmosphere. So you okay, are we saying that the factory makes atmosphere? Cuz it says the factories were shut off, but the prisoners were forced to keep working. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Look, surprise, man, you can't just surprise. go. You can't just go uproot a whole like economic system, <laughs> sociological system. It's a symbiotic you know? system. Yeah, man, they got to leave them there. But this is well, see, this doesn't make sense then because in again <laughs> this, this specific thing this does specifically not make sense. because again in typical expanded universe fashion, Morith Duel right? It says that he's been like on this job Frog for man. years. Frogman <laughs> has been on this job for years because it turns out in the the book that this whole thing was introduced that um so we all know that Han has a bounty on him from of course. Jabba and then like Jabba mentions that you know Han dumped some sort of cargo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You'll never guess what the cargo was. Glit. It was glit <laughs> and you'll never guess who Ratted out Han to the Imperials. Uh, Morith Duel. Uh, <laughs> Morith Duel. Morith jerk. Duel the Ribbit. The Ribbit. <laughs> Quiet <Okay>. Ribbit. <laughs> ribbit. Yep. Are Ribbits from Ryloth? <clears throat> yes. No. No. <laughs> Maybe. What? <laughs> I don't know. Let's let's assume not. They're pro- no, they're Ryloth from, is uh, the Twi'lek. That's the Twi'lek uh, planet, planet, right? Yeah, but are are the Twi'leks from Ryloth, or are they from... They're also from Felucia, aren't they? <laughs> no, that's in the sure. Middle East. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> but yeah, so this this is what I'm saying. <sighs> it's really frustrating that, like, they mentioned the, 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 you know, the Spice Mines of Kessel in Episode 4, mm-hmm. and then all of this, like, history is tied to it. Oh, yeah, of course. Anything that gets a passing mention in the movies gets a whole, at least a book <laughs> worth of stuff. I know, but not only that, but then it's like, oh, this is like, this is why Han, like, you know, when you <laughs> see him in Carbonite, like, this is why. <laughs> because, of, like, the Spice Mines at Kessel. It's ridiculous. It's, it, it, it is. I don't know. Does that not frustrate anyone else? Um, no, I mean, I've just t- learned to accept everything that comes my <laughs> way. <laughs> At this point, I'm like, Jar Jar, all of it, just all of it. it yeah, so I, Star I mean, Wars. I don't have them, like I said, I don't have a problem with them. Oh my god, this picture of Morith Duel looks hideous. Um, yeah, he's got like a monocle or something, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's real gross. Oh um, boy. Well, I'll post that on our like Facebook and Instagram and all that. Yeah. Yes. Like I said, I don't have a problem with them trying to bridge all this stuff because that's what that's what drew me to the expanded universe was like wanting to know more about all all these like little snippets that they put in the movies. Yeah. I just don't understand why it has to be like you know like I said tied into like, oh this is why Han was captured because of Morth Duel. <laughs> right. Oh. According to Wikipedia, Ribbits are from Varl Parentheses, possibly. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? I'm looking at that right now. <laughs> oh, boy. There's a fair amount. Maybe that can be a whole episode itself. This is just it's a gold mine. all this stuff. Uh, so, <laughs> They're yeah. from this planet, probably. Han Solo, <laughs> Chewbacca, Lando Calrissian, and other Wookiee soldiers eventually went to Kessel post-Battle of Endor and repowered the atmosphere factories, and in the process, freed many of the slaves, is what it says. That's an interesting qualifier there, so I guess they didn't free all the slaves. They repowered <laughs> the factory, and they're like, look, we, we still need to get our glit fixed, so 
You guys keep working. <laughs> um. Yeah, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that kind of sounds like what it was, because after that, the New Republic said, well, we're not going to have slaves. We're going to turn Kessel into a legitimate spice mining business. And guess who is put in charge of, of this business? I'm going to let you say it. Nine numb. <laughs> <laughs> He was installed as the administrator around 13 ABY by Lando Calrissian, who purchased the mines. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, so all this more dual stuff happened in between then, I guess? I guess that... No, that was must have been in before the Battle of Endor. No, because oh it's boy. in the Jedi Academy trilogy. Okay, yeah, then that then must all have this been happens. right after. And then once the New Republic came in, that's when Lando... <laughs> comes in and buys the and spice buys mines it. of Kessel and turns yeah. it into uh, a legitimate operation because I guess even the new republic's like we still need to get, you know, like <laughs> we need these drugs. Yeah, maybe no it's like a swindler. It's like a medical marijuana thing and they're like, look, people with problems <laughs> need this spice. I guess so, right? It's exactly what it's like. <laughs> yeah, so that's twice that the <laughs> that the republic or rebellion like has come in and they're like, well, not so fast on destroying this <laughs> yeah. j- fucking drug mine. Heavily Let's think addictive. about this. <laughs> Maybe this is all commentary about the international drug trade in uh, in Colombia. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I, that's really interesting. You know what? I, I come hope around. So. I've come around. This is all brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second, Illuminati. So Nine Numb uh, apparently did a very good job of managing the spice mines and turned it into a very profitable business. I mean, I guess it's pretty easy to be a profitable business when you're the only stores, the only source <laughs> of a highly addictive uh, substance. But uh, yeah, odd. Old Nine Numb did it. <laughs> yep. Uh, and so Big here's genius. where you are going to get excited, Meg. So during All the right. Yizong, Yuzong Vong no. War. Uh huh. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> yeah. How do you pronounce that? Yuzon. Yuzon. Yuzon Vong. Yuzon Vong. <laughs> Yuzon Vong Thong Song. Uh, <laughs> baby, that thong. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you just you owe Cisco like a hundred dollars now. <laughs> that Vong. Also, vong. get off this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. Okay, yeah, uh, the planet was the, the planet was conquered by uh, Vong's. I don't know. <laughs> it just all sounds so ridiculous. Um, and it didn't say much after that, but I I have found so it, it seems that in much later years there were like expeditions of uncharted tunnels that um, kind of broke loose. Due to due to earthquakes or uh, planetoid quakes, I guess you want to call them. And uh, okay. this is where, guys, this is the stupidest thing I've ever read, and I don't know how <laughs> to I don't know how to say it. So I'm just gonna read exactly what it says. So Han and Leia <laughs> discovered a vast cavern, the size of a city, filled with fungi stalks, one or two meter long centipedes. Crimson colored spiders that ate fungi and small avian, quote, things, much like miniature hawk bats. <laughs> this cavern also had gigantic blocks of manufactured equipment. It was believed by Han and Leia that the machinery inside Kessel was created by the Celestials. Boom. What? <laughs> Drop the that, mic. See, <laughs> see, that's what I'm talking about. So in this planet that is conveniently the only source of the like the only drug in Star Wars is also this oblong planetoid happens to be <laughs> planet. like the source. So, you know, maybe this is like a Dune thing. Maybe this is a Terrence McKenna food of the gods because the spiders maybe were made by the ph- celestials in this machine and ate this magic fungi and then spat this shit out of their mouth that people then smoke or eat or something and have crazy telepathic base. visions. I mean, this all seems right. legit to me. I don't, I don't know what your problem <laughs> is with it. See, I already forgot about the telepathic powers. Can we not forget that? 
This is a highly addictive drug that gives you powers. Deep. Like <laughs> you were granted superpowers. Oh boy. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Not as ridiculous as Celestials. I I don't know. I don't know, guys. Oh right, and then it all was from the gods. <laughs> yeah, this and really is like here. a Terrence McKenna thing. That's wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's this. Uh, so then we didn't even talk about the Kessel Run. Well, the Kessel Run. No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so those are just the spice mines of Kessel. The Kessel, the Kessel Run was, was the the like smugglers hyperspace lane, right? Was it, or it was a cluster of black holes, right? Oh boy, let's find out. <laughs> Eighteen parsec root. All right. So uh, oh used boy. by smugglers to move glitterstone spice from Kessel to an area south of the Ciclata cluster, cluster without getting caught by Imperial ships. Okay, but you so had yeah, to it go... was a, hy- a hyperspace route. Hi- oh, hyperspace. Okay, but but because parsec is a measure of distance, right? Yeah. Well, I think they retconned it in the books to be a a measure of distance, but then so I no, guess Han a... was trying to say like. That he got the closest to the black holes without I think getting he was, sucked in, right? I think there he was talking go. out of his ass during that scene to try and get him to like <laughs> oh. to sound like, oh, so awesome, I did it 12 parsecs. I mean, really what it is was it was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But this is one of those great things where the expanded universe comes and they're like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> what this was, was... <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I think I think you were right, Meg, about the the idea that he was able to navigate super close to the various black holes because the ship was fast enough not to get not sucked, to get sucked in. in, right? Yeah, it yeah. says that it takes him around the mall, Ugh. which is all bad. Yes, that's God. where Dala is. That's where Dala lives. Oh yeah, here 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 you go. Instead, he was referring to the shorter route. He was able to travel by skirting the nearby Ma black hole cluster. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. There you go. Managed to cut the distance down to about 11.5 parsecs. Source questionable. Dang. <laughs> and he was on the Kessel Run when he dumped, of course, because of course, he was on the Kessel Run when he dumped Jabba's shipment. But the oh. first shipment, right? So, with the with the new scene in episode four, it sounded... The way that they make it sound is that there was the initial shipment that put Han and Jabba's poor graces or whatever. And he's like, oh, no, let me make it up to you. So then presumably there was another job that Han Solo ran for him that went poorly as well. Do we know what that run was? I don't know. What level of canon is that? Uh, Which boss do you have to beat to get to that canon, Brian? Well, that was in the special edition movies, so I can only assume they're not canon. Huh? No, the special edition is canon. I was making a joke, Brian. Oh. Well, I don't know. Some people would probably agree with you. (laughs) Wait, is that true? I'm confused now. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, like, special edition is canon. Currently. Yes. Yes. Of course. So that scene... That wonderful scene with uh, Jabba <laughs> outside the Falcon in Episode the, Four is that with the happened. cut and paste of of uh, Harrison Ford walking over his tail that didn't exist. Yep. Yeah, you know, you bring up an interesting point because it's really only a matter of time till Disney releases the original trilogy. Like, there's a dollar to be made; they're gonna make it, you know. So when that happens, what is canon? Did Greedo shoot first, or did Han shoot first? I feel like they're gonna have to make a yeah. multi-tiered canonical system, guys. It's no, back <laughs> no. C cannon, G cannon, S cannon, N cannon, Brian cannon, B cannon. That's what the ladies call it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I see. I don't know. <laughs> it's only a matter of time, guys. It's only a matter I of guess. time. Yeah, you're probably right, but they'll probably just say like, "Well, no, special edition, that's what." Or you could that's just what take it really like, is all about. You could take a rational approach and just be like, "It doesn't matter." <laughs> but that's not, <laughs> that's not good enough. We're not That's not We're not proponents of rationality here. Okay. Absolutely not. 
Well, that is all I have, and that is our show. You can check back with us every other Wednesday for brand new episodes. We would like to do the show weekly, um, switch the schedule, and maybe do it a little more frequently, but it depends on how well it's received and what kind of ratings and feedback we're getting. So, you know, let us know. Leave us a review on iTunes and um, spread the word to your friends. It's super important when we're just starting out for, for word of mouth to kind of build and you know we don't have an advertising budget so if you enjoy this it means everything to us for you to just be like hey i have a friend who likes star wars hey friend who likes star wars listen to this show about star wars especially you know people who have this uh nostalgia for the expanded universe um i think that uh hopefully this makes us a little bit unique from what other star wars podcasts are doing yeah, uh, you can also email us with suggestions or thoughts or questions. Maybe we'll do like listener questions on the show. Um, you can email us podcast at Star Wars Fodder dot com. You can also follow us on all the various social medias. Facebook dot com slash Star Wars Fodder at Star Wars Fodder on Twitter. Star Wars Fodder on Instagram. And of course, our website, Star Wars Fodder dot com, where you can see show notes and download the audio files directly if that's your thing guys that's it i'm brian west at brian west art on twitter i am miguel silva at Pudu mig i'm aaron sax uh at am sax s-a-c-k-s music on twitter goodbye forever Toodles. Right, bye everybody